under Organize. And if you click on Organize, you will see there's, an, there's a drop-down menu item called Layout. If you go to Layout, there'll be another item called Detail Pane. And I have mentioned that in, in slides after this one, so there'll be another chance or another opportunity to show you what that, where that is. But basically, for your information, Detail Pane is this item down here, this whole section down the bottom from here to here. And again, I've, I've mentioned that in slides after this one. So again, you'll get another chance to see how that works. But basically, the, the point that I've, if you haven't already read this slide, that I'm making with the slide in question, if you look on the right, you'll see that obviously each of these files simply have an incremental number. And especially when viewed in this mode, it's very difficult to see where let's say photos of my holiday start and where they end and then say photos of what I was doing yesterday start and where photos of even my family starts. So simply by looking at these files it's rather difficult unless you're looking at it with that icon to see exactly what photo you want at a, at a glance. So that's why I have focused on this renaming process of being able to select a bunch of photos that belong together and basically rename them so that they're all called something like holiday one, holiday two, holiday three and so on. And I find this to be a very useful um, feature to begin with. Okay, so moving on. And again, okay, here we go. This is the detail view at the top. This is sort of the medium icon view at the bottom. And again, you'll see that I've highlighted the detail pane here. And so reading the screen, we can see we've got the question of how can I tell which image is which? And my answer to that was, as I mentioned before, is to rename things in a sort of order that makes sense to you. So photos that are called, the photos that were taken on a holiday, Maybe you could rename them all as holiday pictures or just ho just the word holiday. And again, if I was taking a hold of photos of um, the work that I've been doing for somebody and I'm setting something up, I might call them a workstation. And I've highlighted that work because that's the one that we're actually going to do as, as a test for this webinar. And what you might also notice is that um, and again, I'll mention, I have mentioned this in slides um, further on from here, but you will notice that some of these numberings, like for example, from these two here, which are 77 and 78, and then it moves down to 80 and 81, and you'll notice that there's a bit of a gap in between, and I explain why that is. Okay, so Now, this is the process, in Windows at least, of how to rename a sequence of photos. It may not be every photo in that folder, but just a sequence of photos that you might want to rename. And by the way, I probably should have mentioned something earlier, so let me just go back for a second. I missed a step, so let me just go back for a second. Um, Okay, what, I'm, what, I, what, what I should have mentioned at this slide back here, and I haven't put it into the slide, so you have to um, read here as it says, in this process where you see all the photos on your iPad, you will need to copy them rather than move them, and ideally I would do it this way, is just to copy them and to paste them into a folder somewhere obvious and in this case I made a folder called iPad Photos and I put that on my desktop. So I'm, I'm hoping that everybody read that and, and realised that that's what I've been doing and so then it'll make a bit more sense later on. Okay, so in this sequence here and again I'll just highlight it there so you can see I've got the, I've got the folder called iPad Photos open on my computer. So at this stage, I've copied all of the photos from my iPad and put them into this folder called iPad Photos. 
So at this point, we're dealing with just the pictures that have been copied onto the computer in that folder. And you'll notice that it's in medium icon view, so that's why we see these little icons like so on the screen. And then basically, to select a sequence of images rather than all of them together, the first thing you would do is, in this instruction number two, is to press shift and click on the first image you want to select. Then, if you're doing a sequence from one to the other in consecutive order, you would use the shift option. You would press shift on that while selecting that image there. So in other words, click on it. And then you would, while still holding down the shift key, click on this image at the same time. And in effect, <clears throat> that will select all the images from, in this case, image 0117, all the way through to image 0141. So again, following down the instructions, and this is rather important, we want to go to the first image of the sequence that we've now selected. So it's this one, while we've still got all the other images still highlighted from there to there. So with this one selected, we want to right click on it, that's the right click on the mouse, and then we go to rename. You'll see rename in a little drop down menu. And this, the reason why we need to select the first image is that when we rename all the images, so we're going to change it from image 0117, which happens to be its name, and we're going to replace that whole thing with the word workstation. Because in, the, in this case, that's actually what will happen. Sorry, that, that they were the photos that I took at the time, and they were photos of me setting up where I'm currently um, using the computer at the moment. It's our workstation in the office. And what you will notice, and I can demonstrate that afterwards when I do a bit of a screen share, so hopefully it will become a bit clearer um, after I do that, is that each of these photos will be renamed from renamed workstation one, workstation two, workstation three, etc. All the way down to workstation, I think it's number 22. Okay, so I'll try and do a screen share again. Okay, so let, let me just show you in real time exactly what we had in the previous slide. So here are my images, and you'll notice that image 0117, that was that image of that sequence that we just had in the slide before. And this is just a neat little trick that you might want to try at the same time on your computer or do this after the webinar. If you move your mouse right down to the bottom like so, you will see that it changes to a double arrow. Can everybody see that? that that's, that's right, Keith. Okay. So with, with the arrow down here, you can carefully click on that line that goes all the way across the, the screen like so. And that's, the, that's where the detail pane is. If I click on that line, can actually resize the detail pane like so. Can everybody see that I've done that? Give me a tick so I can see. Okay, good. All right. As you can see, that's a much bigger icon or a much better preview, if you like, of that image. So if when you're working in this sort of um, mode with small thumbnail images and you're not quite sure which one it is, I would suggest just using this detail pane down here like this to resize it such that you can see which image you've selected. So as I select each image, you'll see a reasonably bigger image in the detail pane like so that shows the details a bit more clearly of what that image is. Okay. And I, I, I see that someone's mentioned that it is... Uh, 
not possible to do the renaming and so on and so on that like so in the comments section that is true and we will be getting to parts of uh, that information further on but we're going to be using earth and views for that so I'll get, I'll get to that in a second so here we go what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the images Hang in a second let me just change my screen mode okay so I'm going to select all the images that are of my workstation. So looking through carefully, I select that one there. Then I go down to the last one in the sequence, which in this case is this one here. So I've got to hold down the shift key and click on that one there, and then it will select all of those images at the same time. Now that I've got all of those images selected, I go to the first image. Hopefully you'll be able to see there that I've got the first image selected. Okay. Um, what I will now do is I will right click on that image. And if I scroll down the menu, you'll see rename down the bottom here. Can everybody see the word rename? Give me a tick if you can see the word rename there. Okay, good. So if I click on the word rename there, you will notice that I now have the ability to change the title of this image here where my mouse is. So whatever I type will simply go over the top of and replace IMG underscore 0117 in this instance. So what I'm going to do is simply rename that to workstation. Now, if I'm happy that I've typed it correctly, and yes, that is spelled correctly, all I need to do now is simply hit the Enter key, and all of those images have now been updated from workstation number one all the way through to workstation 22. And I'll just change my mode so you can see it better. There we go. So those there, this this section here are all of the pictures that I just renamed. And the point about selecting the first image in that set first is that they've all been renamed in the order that they were originally taken. If I selected a different one first, it would rename them out of order. And seeing as I've renamed them, I don't know what the original order was. And that's the only problem with doing this particular process, is that by renaming them this way, I'm actually going over the top of the original file name. So I have no ability to double check it. In fact, the only thing I can do at this stage is go to, um, where is it? Oh, well, I could do it by right click. Okay, right click on the image again and do undo. Nicely. Control Z. Yeah, okay, undo. Um, just, just a little note to everybody. To do the undo option, to undo that rename that I just did, I had to use the keyboard and press Control and Z. And I'll just type that in the um, chat window so everybody can see. And, and the reason why that is important to note is that when I tried to use the right-click menu, it didn't show up. And that's one little thing about using Windows and using this particular way of doing things, is that it might not be terribly obvious or clear where the button is. Okay, thanks for that. Somebody's just mentioned that it's under-organized. 